The remaining types of undergrowth are the tall grasses. And my goal with these is to bridge the gap between obviously autumn hero tree and seasonally ambiguous evergreens surrounding it, which in part is intentional for the sake of the composition, which I think is appealing to have only one tree be clearly representative of autumn. It's drawing the focus in and it makes reasonable sense because evergreens don't change their colors in the fall or winter. However, currently I think there's too clear of a distinction and the fact that our tall grasses lean a little bit towards the gold direction, I think will be a nice bridge to solidify that our surrounding scene is also in an autumn time period. And so what this means compositionally is I'm going to focus the tall grass growth on each side of the hero tree. Let me create an annotation to kind of talk about what I'm referring to. So I'm gonna have one type of tall grass concentrated here on the left side, the other type concentrated on the right side so that they're pretty distinguishable from each other with a little bit of overlap in the middle to kind of blur them together. And so let's do that now. While I'm still in the image editor, let's go ahead and switch to slot three so that we can render a comparison and control space to return to our user interface. And once again, I will create a new particle setting and call it tall grass. Hey, let's make a little bit more room so we can see all of our slots. And I will also be sourcing the particle settings from our sapling data. All right, so we'll select that, duplicate it, and call it tall grass A data. And let's go select the proper object. Instead of sapling, we'll type tall grass A. Excellent, now our tall grass is present on the ground floor. We've got some randomized rotation, though it may be a little bit too extreme. Let's go to our rotation settings and dial down the randomize to like 0.1. There we go. We want these to be facing a little more vertically. And right away, we can start focusing on the population, which will need its own specific vertex group. So I'm going to jump to our object data, add a new vertex group, and call it tall grass underscore density. Okay, and just by creating it, there's no influence in that vertex group. And so if we jump to our particle settings and select that as our vertex group density, we get zero growth. But now we can jump into our weight paint, change the weight up to one, strength we can leave at one, and I can start painting grass into the scene. Now keep in mind that this is going to paint 100% of the number wherever we touch. So immediately we get a ton of tall grasses in that first click and it was also pretty slow. So let's take down the number and gradually step it up. Let's go to 100. And so as we click, we get more and more tall grass growth, which I actually want to undo that. I like the way it was set up towards the back. Yeah, like this, maybe click here and just gradually touch around. Now it's kind of concentrated a little too much, but as we paint more, and also we can dial down the strength, like 0.3, and wherever we touch, we'll only have a little bit of grass added. And then click maybe one time on the other side, but primarily focusing on the left. Let's see what that looks like from the camera. Not too bad, that's a good start at least. Now, um, how about we adjust the scale? I think it's a bit too tall. Same kind of problem earlier with the grass where it makes our tree seem much smaller. So let's go to the scale settings here under, where is it? Render. And let's go down to like 0.2. I think that's a much more appropriate scale. Although could we increase scale randomness perhaps? Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Now one problem is that if you remember how this tall grass is shaped, let's select that tall grass A and then zoom in on it. We can leave weight paint, tall grass A, zoom in on it, is remember that our leaf pattern is designed to face one direction. It's kind of two dimensional, but currently it's not oriented in a way that faces the camera. So we're kind of getting a funky pattern on each of the stalks. And so we can solve this by navigating to the render section of our particle settings, specifically under object, 
object rotation. If we tick that, it will orient each of the stalks according to our object. And since our source object is facing the camera, all of these start to face the camera. But it introduces another problem, and it's that the shading of our tall grass A material is using diffuse right now. But ever since we added that first layer of grass, we have been introducing more emissive elements to balance out our values, specifically these shaded values. So I'm gonna do that here as well. We can simply take the emission of our viewer node, add shift A, shader, mix shader. Let's see what it looks like at a 0.5 mix. And that already looks a lot better. So since we see just ever so slight leaning toward gold and red, I think this does a lot for making the overall scene feel more autumn, though it might be a little too subtle. So what if we try to change the color ramp? There we go. Now it's sticking out a bit more. And I wonder if they're a little bit too straight, right? So what if we tab into edit mode on this guy and give it a bit of a curve? Set our 3D cursor to the bottom of the stock and then disable connected only proportional editing. And let's rotate according to the 3D cursor. There we go, something like this. Just give it a little bit of a curve. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, much better, much, much better in the camera. Okay, cool. I think that that does look pretty good. So let's do the same thing with our other tall grass. All right, let's add a new particle setting. We will call it tall grass B. Definitely make it a duplicate of the first tall grass particle settings and duplicate it before we rename it. Tall grass B. Make sure that we select tall grass B. We can just barely see that pop in. Remember, the vertex group is disassociated. So if we change it to temporarily grass density, we can see them populate. And this is more of a wheat style tall grass. So I think this one should be a little bit taller than the other one. But um, we can also disable the uh, object rotation. Since this is more of a three dimensional tall grass, it looks good from all angles. We don't need it to um, be limited to the position it's in as the source object. All right. So really, I think the next thing to do is add a custom vertex group to map out the density. All right, so we'll add another blank vertex group, tall grass B density. I forgot to name the other one properly, just tall grass. All right, so select tall grass B, go to our particle settings and choose tall grass B, and they will all disappear. We can jump into weight paint mode and start adding them with a strength at 0.3. I kind of like that approach where we gradually build up the density rather than jumping full force into uh, 100 influence. Oh yeah, just lightly touching on the uh, surface. That is really fun. You see it kind of pop into existence. Okay, so this is the kind of thing that I was after where it's mostly concentrated on one side for tall grass B and then tall grass A on the other. Though I do want a little bit of overlap here in the middle. The problem is one click at a time is kind of too much. So if I continue adding to this side, the density will increase. Though if I change the weight down to zero and gradually take down this side, that should also decrease. Yeah, you can see them sort of pop in and out. Okay, maybe make the strength a little bit stronger and do the same thing. I'm trying to do this without jumping into weight paint visualization, but you can always jump to solid mode, enable our overlays, and then you can turn off the particle settings. We've got a lot here. There we go. And get very focused per vertex group influence. Now I think it's kind of a really sharp line here. So let's um, take the strength down to 0.1, weight up to one, the closer we get to yellow and red, the more dense this area will be. There we go. I think that could work, at least in theory. All right, let's jump back to rendered view, disable our uh, viewport overlays, and bring back our other particle settings. 
we've got a very nice lush forest floor at this point. Though um, I do feel like our wheat grass is a little bit uh, too consistent in terms of size. So let's adjust that. Maybe make it overall slightly taller. So tall grass B, change the scale from 0.2 to like 0.3. And then scale randomness, we definitely want to be pretty high. Okay, that kind of breaks up the monotony a little bit. Maybe it's a little too populated overall, so we can take the number down to like 300. Maybe even less. Maybe I want these to be less populated than the other tall grass. How about 100? That's not too bad. It's kind of, you know, up to your taste at this point. But let's do a render and see what it looks like with the full undergrowth. If I remember correctly, we already switched the slot, but it doesn't hurt to double check. Yes, we're at slot three. Let's kick off a render. All right, let's maximize it. See what we think. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this. I think it's doing its job for bridging the gap seasonally from the evergreens to the heroic main tree. And overall just seems like a much more believable forest scene now. Really all that's left in the project is kind of one final pass of tweaks to make it exactly what I want.